everybody. Welcome to another episode of Daily Life with Deb. Have you had such a busy summer that, like me, you haven't had time to do any of the deeper cleaning, just basically just the light stuff, keep up with the dishes, the laundry, and maybe floors. <laughs> That's pretty much the extent of my summer. There's been a few times I've been able to do a little bit more, but for the vast majority of the time, I was just basically keeping up with daily needs. And I will tell you, my house is ready for a reset, and I am so ready for that reset. It's my house, literally right now, is driving me crazy. But before I can do that, I need to make some more of my natural cleaners. I, about a year or more ago, I, well, okay, I was raised pretty, with, in a, with a pretty natural lifestyle, but we still used name, like, Ajax dish soap, we used bleach, we used just yeah maybe not like the really harsh chemicals and we didn't my mom was never one to go buy like separate like bathroom cleaners and um well whatever other cleaners are even out there but um so i used i don't really have a whole lot of different ones either i basically have about three things i use but i use them everywhere in the house more or less and that's what we're going to make here today so um back to what i was saying from like a year ago I started um, trying to get even more natural than what I was raised with and so the cleaners I have now do not have any artificial fragrances no dyes um, no um, I'm trying to get away from parabens sodium lauryl sulfates phthalates um, there might be a couple other things that's just not coming to mind right now but um, I'm not 100% where I want to be yet, but uh, this is where I'm at my journey and I would like to share that with you guys who maybe could benefit from this as well. Um, yeah, just there's in these chemical cleaners, there's just so many like carcinogens, endocrine disruptors and such things like that, that um, yeah, I will admit that the natural things maybe don't work quite as effectively efficiently as the the chemicals but I mean I would more than I'm more than willing to put in a little bit more elbow grease and not have the health risk that the chemicals have so so um yeah if you guys are ready we will go ahead and get started okay the first cleaner we're going to make is my basic all-purpose cleaner I use this for pretty much everything. I clean my glass top stove with it. It's not a heavy duty cleaner. I do have another commercial product I do use for that. I'm wanting to find a replacement uh, for that. But I only use the heavy duty one like maybe once a week or so. And the rest of the time I just use my basic all purpose. And I like to use this for wiping down countertops. Um, yeah, just like just a multi-purpose, multi-surface cleaner. I'll say multi-surface cleaner. Um, because I even sprayed my wooden, like my coffee table and end tables and stuff with it sometimes when I'm dusting and it just needs to have a little wipe down. I will do that. Whereas um none of the other sprays I have I don't that I make, I don't think any of them are safe for wood. So okay, and I didn't realize that, that I'm almost out of this this soap. So I hope I have enough to get through these recipes. This is what I buy. I like to use this. You can just get this from Walmart. Um, probably other places too, but I get it at Walmart. It is um, free from one for one and four dioxane, and I don't even know what that is, but I'm assuming it's bad. <laughs> I should look into this kind of thing more. It's free from parabens, dyes, phthalates, and I know that it's fragrance free as well. And it is, um, I believe, yes, yeah, plant based. So. Anyway, so you can use any dish soap you want, or really any liquid soap. I have um, a friend that makes this, and she uses cast, liquid Castile soap. I haven't done that yet because I don't really, I feel like it would gunk up in the sprayer here. Um, I don't really know if she uses hers in a spray bottle, or you could mix it up that way and use it in a squirt bottle if you're not sure. But this works for me, so this is what I do. And so we're going to put three tablespoons. Of this soap. Let's 
squish it around in the water here. Get the rest of that soap off. And then add three cups of water. So if you want a smaller or a larger amount of this, just remember one tablespoon of soap to each cup of water. I should have poured slower because I'm afraid, yep, I knew the suds were going to come up. I might be able to get it all in for the suds. Well, here. Since that's all suds, I'm just going to go ahead and finish pouring this in and let it run over. So my soap is actually, or my cleaner is actually down there, so we just lost a little bit of suds. Okay, then you can take the essential oil of your choice. This is lemon. I love lemon. I usually use mostly citrus oils because I think they smell so fresh and make, I don't know, the smell of lemon, just, I don't know, it makes everything seem cleaner to me. And you can use however much you want in here. I generally will use about 10 drops per cup so we will put like 30 drops in here but I like it very lemony and yes you probably especially if you had stronger oils um, actually I was using a cheaper oil so I never I I may have made it too lemony this is aura cassia I just got this bottle so before that, I think I was just using like a cheap Walmart brand, but I'm trying to get into better quality oils, so. And I know there will be those that argue that that maybe isn't even the highest quality, which I know it's not, but I'm kind of on a budget too, so. So, yep, shake it up. Let me get. Should have used the other paper towel. Shake it up, and since there's nothing in here to keep the oil blended with the water, every time you take it out to use it, I usually just give it a little shake like that. Oops. Mmm, mm, very nice and lemony. Oh, I love that. So, yep. Yeah. There's your all-purpose multi-surface cleaner. Okay, our next recipe is citrus vinegar. I'm going to be making it with limes today, but you can make it with lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruits, any kind of citrus fruit, and you can also um, use a combination of fruits if you like. Um, what I normally would do is just take the rinds from the fruit after I use them in a recipe, lemonade or something like that, um, and that's what I would use to put in that, but I was just gifted a whole lot of limes and I actually had a bunch of limes already in the refrigerator that were getting, I mean, they're starting to get dried out. They're getting spots on them and stuff. And so I thought, you know what? I don't really need to make anything with these right now, especially since they're getting a little older. They're, I mean, they're far from rotten or anything, not moldy or anything, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the whole fruit. So if you have, like, if you live in um, a climate where you have your own orange tree or lemon tree or anything or something like that, and you have plenty of fruit or just have access to a lot of cheap fruit, feel free to use the whole fruit. But um, if you don't, then the rinds work just fine. Basically, we're gonna just fill this to the top with, actually, maybe I'll quarter these. I'm not used to using the whole fruit. Boy, these rinds are getting tough. Yeah, they're getting a bit dried out. I guess we'll do these in quarters so I can kind of squish them in. Um, and while you're making this, this is gonna, we're gonna cover this with completely with white vinegar and let it sit for two or three weeks until it changes color. And during that time, if you use, like, if you like to put lemon in water daily, you can add your rinds to your jar every single day. Um, I pretty much always... So like start a batch and I might it might be six weeks two months later before I actually get to use it But during that time I'm adding to my jar because 
might only start off with a few and just keep adding more fruit and vinegar until either until I either need it because I usually have two or three jars of this going at all times I have a jar in the pantry and I have this jar I started a couple about a week ago or no I guess it's been close to two weeks between one and two weeks ago anyway I could have crammed a lot more in there but this will work for this for now so I hope I have enough vinegar left here I may have to get my get more oh yeah yay Actually, I had that was a little bit too much but that's fine so we'll just put this in a on the shelf somewhere it doesn't matter if it's in the light or in the dark warm cold it's fine um, if you do put it into the lights and like direct sunlight or where it's warmer it'll probably make faster I've never really been in a hurry so I don't know um, see this is it'll go from clear to I don't know how well you could see this but it's kind of a yellow lemony color now and it'll actually get as dark as apple cider vinegar eventually but you can use it like this or you can just let it get darker what I do is mix a third of the um, citrus vinegar with two-thirds of water in a spray bottle and I use that for multi-purpose cleaner you want to be careful some things you use it on um, I know wood, some wood finishes, it can be hard on and it can pick off some wood finishes. So you want to be careful about that. You'll want to do a test area in an inconspicuous area. Um, let's see, there was one more thing I was going to say about, oh, you will want to strain it through like a coffee filter or um, maybe a paper towel. I think I've pretty much always used a coffee filter though because um, these little part, fine little particles and that of the lemon or any kind of fruit um, will clog up your sprayer so that won't work this won't work very well another issue I've been having is I only use the dollar store like the Dollar Tree spray bottles and it seems like after a month or two they quit working the sprayer quits working um, I know it's probably because they're just a cheap sprayer but it seems like they they last longer on all my other cleaners than they do the citrus vinegar and I had read something about the vinegar being hard on um, because it does kind of break down plastics and so I think it might be just hard on the sprayer mechanism or something so um, for me it just works to buy a new sprayer every two months or whatever which is kind of wasteful um, but I'm a little worried. I, I'm look, I've gone on Amazon and I've looked at these spray bottles that are like 10 or 15 dollars each, and I'm like, I don't know if the sprayers themselves are any better. Somebody did uh, recommend or did suggest. I don't think they had, they had even tried it. They suggested um, to go to like a hardware store and get more of like an industrial type of sprayer, like spray bottle. And so that might be something I'll try. But um, for now, it's working. Um, but yeah, this works. I use this like on my glass top stove. I love it in the bathroom. I absolutely love it for cleaning the like the tub and the sinks and that. And I've even used it in the toilet. Like put a little glug in there when I'm scrubbing. Um, I usually use um, my cleaning paste, which I'll add the recipe for that in here as well. Um, that's what I usually use on my toilets. But I just yeah, I really like this in the bathroom because I think I feel like it disinfects to a point. Um, it deodorizes, um, just has a nice lemony smell. It does smell a bit like vinegar, but um, I actually don't mind it because I think it smells fresh with the lemon. Yeah, so. Alrighty, here we go with the, your citrus vinegar. Our next recipe is for lavender lemon room spray. And to make this spray, we are going to use one cup of water. And then we need a quarter cup. Okay, this is gonna sound like a crazy amount of vanilla. What you can do if you'd rather is use a quarter cup of some kind of alcohol such as vodka or even rubbing alcohol. Um, I decided to go with a quarter cup of pure vanilla from Costco because I got this from a friend oh, a while ago. It's been a couple of years and I was using it but I found other vanilla that I liked better. And um, I feel like this is very weak in baked goods. It smells like vanilla, but you really can't taste it very well. 
unless you use a lot of it. And then by the time I use a lot of it, I feel like I can taste the alcohol. I mean, depending what you put it in. If you put it in like brownies or something, obviously the alcohol gets, gets cooked out, but then I can't hardly taste the vanilla. If you add it to like a smoothie or something, because I like to put vanilla in my smoothies, then it's like, I can really tell, taste the alcohol. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Um, but you could use, like I said, a quarter cup of any other kind of alcohol, and then you would use um, just enough vanilla in there to like where you could smell it. And to be honest, I don't even know for sure how much that would be. That would probably be a little bit of a trial and error thing for you, depending on the vanilla, because I mean, the vanillas are just so many different strengths. And you could even, if you wanted to, use a cheap, like an imitation vanilla. I have done that. It's probably not the most natural thing, but I know it's a whole lot better than what else, whatever is in all those other commercial, commercial room sprays. So, so we're going to put a quarter cup of vanilla. And then this part, this part, you just, just do it to, to you're happy with the, with the scent. I'm gonna probably start off with, I'm gonna probably do about 10 drops of lemon and like, and I'll do like four of lavender, cause I feel like lavender can overpower lemon pretty well. Even though the lavender, the lemon is a strong oil, I just feel like it does overpower it. One of my favorite, um, scent combinations for like a simmer pot. I like to do a lot of simmer pots in the spring, in the winter time. And one of my favorites is simmering rosemary, vanilla, and lemon on the stove in, in some water. And this, I feel it kind of mimics it. I don't have rosemary oil. Someday I may go ahead and try it with the rosemary, but I feel like that could be kind of strong. Yeah. See, I can smell, I can smell vanilla and lavender very strong, but I can't smell the lemon much, so. I'll go ahead and add like probably 10 more drops. So that is 20 drops of lemon, four drops of lavender. So see that ratio is pretty. Um, yeah. I think that honestly, if I were to do this again, I probably would have gone ahead and used a little bit less lavender. Like I say, I hadn't done it with the uh, pure vanilla extract yet. I was just, I was, I was using the imitation extract. But I think we're pretty happy with that though. Um, and then you just pour that into your spray bottle. And the alcohol is to kind of get the water and the oil to mix and to blend. But I still, even when I take it out and I'm ready to spray, there's a little bit left. I take it out and I'm ready to spray. Maybe it's just habit because of my other cleaners, but I just take it and I give it a shake before I spray it. So, And you can do, if you don't want to do lavender and the lemon and lavender, or vanilla, lavender and lemon, you can, like I said, just use a quarter cup of any other kind of alcohol and then other any other kind of essential oils you want to use. Um, you can do other citrus sprays or any combination. I would just I would just have fun. I think an orange clove would really smell nice for like the winter time. But this one here, I feel like is a pretty good um, any time of the year, like all seasons. Like I guess in the fall when everybody wants like pumpkin spice and everything, it wouldn't be so much for that. But it, it's it's very um, versatile. Like for I think the vanilla makes works really anytime it smells wintry and homey and cozy and then the lavender and lemon could smell spring like or summer like so so yep there we go we have the lavender lemon vanilla room spray okay my last recipe and i decided to film film this a little bit closer so you guys can see the consistency and stuff is for a cleaning paste um i like to use this on my tub and toilet and shower and that as well as the other cleaners but this is for when you need something with a little bit of scrubbing power um, like a mild abrasive so we're going to start off with one cup of baking soda and honestly I would like to try this with washing soda I haven't yet but it is something that I would really like to try and then one third of a cup 
of dish soap. Two tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. Oops. Eh, well, more or less. <laughs> This actually is a more or less recipe. Just if I add too much liquid, it gets runny. I don't like it runny. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave it at that. And then essential oils of your choice. I'm using orange oil and I'm going to add quite a bit because this is a cheaper oil. I'm not even going to measure. I'm just going to put a couple droppers in there. Because for one thing, citrus oils like orange help with the cleaning power. So I like them pretty strong anyway. And like I said, that was a cheap oil. Oops. Now, when you first mix this up, you see it, it may be somewhat stiff, or it seems stiff, but I would just let it sit a couple minutes and see if it gets more liquid. Because sometimes I'll mix it up to just the right consistency, I feel like, and then I put it in the bottle and put it away. Then a while later, I come back and it's like all watery. So it's like, I don't know, some kind of a chemical reaction that takes place or something. And that actually has plenty of orange room. I'm honestly, I'm just going to make it really, really good. Those of you that have like the Young Living oils and that are probably screaming at the amount of oil I'm putting in here. But honestly, it is a cheap oil. So, hmm. I like how that smells. So, yep. Kind of runny, but still very pasty. And for this, see the last batch I made had turned kind of, as a matter of fact, I might just do that. I might be making a mistake by doing that because I might turn it too liquid, but it made it runny, the last batch. But this is actually a little stiffer than I need. I'll just see how runny it ends up when I, after it sits a little while. to get it into your bottle and there you have your homemade all-natural cleaning paste I ended up actually pouring it into a measuring cup and then pouring it in this bottle this is not the ideal bottle I haven't figured out what would be best to use yet this is actually just an old dish soap bottle I need a smaller one or else mix up a big batch of this at a time but yeah works great um now i think i'm ready to do some cleaning hey i hope you enjoyed today's video and i hope that these recipes will help you in your journey to a happier healthier lifestyle please feel free to share this video with your family and friends and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel until next time take care and god bless